सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग हाउ आर यू प्रोफेसर गुड मॉर्निंग फाइन वेरी फाइन इन क्वारंटाइन नाउ वेरी ग्लैड टू सी यू एंड टॉक टू यू सर या नाइस सेम विद मी मैडम डॉक्टर सोमनाथ मन सिंह मैडम या मैडम वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग हार्टी वेलकम 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 उडर Vanakkam yes, akka you can hear me yes wonderful nice yes. welcome to cutn uh thank you for accepting our invitation i'm very happy to have you here so i would uh, we have our uh, acting vice chancellor professor karpal kumarvel uh, and uh, our uh, former vice chancellor professor ap dash uh, both of them are here and, namaskaram namaskaram yes thank you Uh, Professor Kumar, will I request you to start the event? It's eleven o'clock. We can start. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Member of Parliament, Badme Vibhushan, Dr. Sonal Man Singh, our most respected former Vice Chancellor, Professor A. P. Dash, Professor Madhurima, the event coordinator, deans, heads, faculty. staff and members of the public very good morning to all of you it's my pleasure as well as my privilege to extend a very warm welcome to the cutn decennial distinguished lecture today we have a right person at a right place to speak on a right topic at a right time Vatma Vibhushan Dr Sonal Man Singh honorable member of parliament in Rajya Sabha known for her lifelong dedication and service is the right person with us to deliberate a, a very right topic at a very right place as all of you know Tiruvarur Tanjavur Delta region is known as the cultural capital of tamil nadu but place of dyagaraja muttu sami dikshidar and syama shastri known as the trinity of carnatic music and the university of tamil nadu with its long academic and cultural tradition cultural plurality and diversity and well acknowledged accomplishments in all domains give top priority for the promotion and transmission of culture to the students of cutn representing almost all the states from kashmir to kanyakumari and it is the right time to speak about the self discovery due to the covid 19 period of stress and strains tensions and turmoils as all of you know for the first time in the history of the world since the second world war all institutions schools colleges universities across the world are closed keeping the fingers crossed looking for an uncertain future with tension stress anxiety hence it is the right time that we take an introspection self examination and what is called self therapy this self therapy is highly possible through fine arts dance music and culture and this digital world unfortunately 
has decreased the importance of arts and culture in the younger generation's lives. In spite of all these technological trends, culture and arts have a great impact on the country's education and economy as well. The contributions of art and culture are many. Art and culture enrich and nourish our inner self, inner world. It boosts our creativity and imagination. And it improves the quality of our life. The concept of quality of life is gaining a lot of currency nowadays. And the quality of life concept is an excellent source of wisdom and delight. And arts and culture also helps us to fight stress and anxiety, reducing stress through fine arts. And we have the Ministry of Culture, the Government of India, which implements a number of programs and schemes. So I am very happy that this is Central University of Tamil Nadu, which is always a pioneer, forerunner, in organizing a very timely, a very significant contributing a group of lectures in the name of Disney Lectures as a mark of the completion of 10 years of glorious achievements of the Central University of Tamil Nadu in which uh, the exemplary vice chancellors like Professor Sanjay, Professor Dash have very significantly contributed. And uh, now it is an opportunity for us to celebrate the completion of 10 years through this decennial distinguished lecture series. And uh, I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to the distinguished speaker, Dr. Sonal Mansing today, and uh, our former vice chancellor, our most respected former Vice Chancellor, Professor A.P. Das. And I also take this opportunity to record my appreciation for the excellent arrangements made by Professor Madhurima in this uh, decennial <laughs> lecture series. And I once again extend a very warm welcome to all the deans, heads of the departments, faculty members, staff, students, and members of the public for this decennial distinguished lecture program a very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Um, thanks for those introductory remarks and uh, warm welcome. I request now our former Vice Chancellor, Professor A.P. Dance, to say a few inaugural words. <laughs> Professor Dance, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Distinguished guest. Dr. Sundal Mansingh Ji, Dr. Kumar Abhel, the Acting Vice Chancellor, Professor Madhurima, the organizer of the Distinguished Lecture Series, faculty, staff, and students of the Central University of Tamil Nadu, guest participants, good morning, Wanakam. I am indeed very happy for the opportunity given to me to inaugurate this distinguished lecture. The present generation of students are subject to an unfathomable amount of psychological distress every day. As adults, it's our responsibility to encourage their self-discovery and search for understanding, which is the focal theme of today's distinguished lecture, namely self-discovery through arts. The Central University of Tamil Nadu is really fortunate to have Dr. Sonal Mansingh Ji, member of Parliament Rajya Sabha, for this distinguished lecture. As the former Vice Chancellor of the Central University of Tamil Nadu, I take this opportunity to welcome and thank Dr. Sondal Mansingh Ji for her lecture today. Although there are many ways to spark self-discovery, art is quick and simple way to start. Students need our support to begin their search for understanding. Without 
the proper resources to inspire creativity our students cannot successfully successfully thrive in a demanding 21st century environment it is in this backdrop the present program assumes significance i am very happy to inaugurate this program and i wish this lecture an enlightening experience for all the audience i thank professor kumar abel again for giving me this opportunity to inaugurate this program thank you very much nandri thank you very much sir and uh, i am very keen on uh, listening to ma'am's talk so before we do that i should formally introduce her uh, dr sonal mansingh was nominated by the president of india to rajya sabha the upper house of the indian parliament in july 20, 2018 in recognition of her lifelong dedication and service to indian arts she is the recipient of padma vibhushan in 2003 from shri apj abdul kalam and padma bhushan in 1992 from shri r venkatraman prime minister of india shri narendra modi nominated her as navaratna for the swachh bharat mission clean india mission her unique contribution has been her lifelong work using her knowledge to address socio cultural issues through the chosen medium of dance as a soloist teacher choreographer and motivational speaker as the founder president of shri kamakhya kalapi center for indian classical dances established in 1977 at delhi she has trained several hundred talented students who are carrying the message of indian culture globally she teaches art as holistic concept combining music yoga sanskrit uh, and cultural traditions of india uh, i should add that she is trained formally for whatever be the duration of time in manipuri largely in bharatanatyam and odissi and in kuchipudi if i'm not mistaken yeah. and uh, uh, she is a great motivational speaker and if you go through her biography you will understand that what she is going to speak today self discovery through arts is something that uh, she has practiced i can't think of a better person to be uh, discussing this particular topic with us ma'am welcome and uh, you are highly privileged and waiting to hear you i begin with a big pranam a big vanakkam and a namaskar <clears throat> today ever more than before the contradictory voices noises have increased many fold the social media somewhere has overtaken lives a life of young and old educated uneducated rural or urban man woman children old or i don't think that this this had happened in the preceding millennia in this harsh strong press crossing noises what do we talk how do we speak about self discovery because every day at least a thousand new things emerge from google from youtube from instagram from facebook you name them media and uh, press whatsapp going by all this i think most people think that they have found themselves now this finding <laughs> the the term self discovery is a huge 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 issue first word is word is self how do we define self it defies definition it's a four letter word right s e l f in sanskrit i would say aham i there is a small self 
a small aham and a mega cell and a big aham. The difference between the two is the journey to self-discovery. That's how I look at it. Because it is our small daily mediocrity which gives rise to aham, I, and that I can be translated as ignorance or as arrogance, ego, it's a small aham. The, the larger ramifications, the self journey of self discovery to the mega, the large, virat aham is what we are looking at. And uh, I'm reminded of the Nasadiya Sukta. I'd recommend that for everyone to read that. It's a fantastic declaration of what we call agnosticism, Gnostic. There's nothing. There were no suns, moons, stars, galaxies. There was no light, no darkness, no wind, nothing moved. The time before time began. We cannot even imagine what our ancients, our sages and saints, Rishi Munis, experienced and saw. That, from that to the manifested universe, that was also, we call that the journey of the greatest self-discovery. And this is what is depicted in a very simple, easy way through Indian arts, performing arts. I will make that difference. I tell you why I say performing arts. I say, I'll, I'll tell you that. So from eternity, this question has bothered every human being, whether it is an Eskimo or a caveman or whatever. Who am I? Why am I? Where am I? What is my connection to all this? And those people who are in the habit of gazing at the stars, those astronauts who go to Antariksha, or even simple village people who gaze and gaze and gaze in the space, trying to fit oneself in this greater scheme of things. Now, this is the big question. So I, I'm just saying that <laughs> from this huge, huge, huge emptiness, void, we come from there. And then we become something. What do we become? What is the discovery? How do you discover yourself? And I have said that I am very fortunate not to have been confused from the beginning till this moment. All this noise of media and publicity and fame and social media remains on the outer periphery. It does not penetrate my inner self. And this is also part of this journey. At which point, how you create this barrier, this, I would say, a little uh, uh, inside, outside persona, which is very, very important if you wish to understand, if you wish to comprehend, if you wish to have even a small glimpse of who you are, why you are, where you are. So I said, I was given the name of Sonal. And in India, as in many ancient civilizations, 
the names are given which have beautiful meanings. My Madhurima is a beautiful, it has a wonderful meaning, comes from Madhurya, the ultimate among the rasas, the ultimate essence of life, of creation, Madhurya, sweetness, the benevolent, the benediction, the beauty. My name Sonal is a Gujarati name. I'm a Gujarati. And in Saurashtra, the part of Gujarat, my mother came from there. It means golden. Swarna, Swarnil, in the Saurashtra lingo, Sonal. A lot of people call me Sonal, Sonal, Sonalini, doesn't matter. But I, as simple as I am, as a person, my name is very simple, Sonal. Now, golden, so the gold, where is it found? It is found among the dust particles. Gold is in that dust. How? What are the processes? What does it have to go through to become gold? And I thought that after going through the tapasya, because tapa, the word tapa, tapa, tapa means heat, extreme heat, unbearable heat. So, those particles have to go through the tapasya, the hardship, the processes to fire. And that makes it tangam, as you say in Tamil. It becomes kundan, it becomes swarna, it becomes kanaka, the shining one, shining as the sun. And this process, the tapasya, that is the journey, according to me, what I experience even today in my life is the journey to self-discovery. Then I thought I'll give you a little example. And naturally, I will give you examples from my life, a few from others later. In 1961, my Arangetram, was held in Bangalore. My grandfather was then the governor of Mysore. It had not become Karnataka and it had not become Bangaluru. It was still state of Mysore and it was Bangalore. My gurus, Professor U.S. Krishna Rao and his wife, Chandrabhaga Devi. My Arangetram in 1961. Now, before I came to that Arangetram stage, my Gujarati family, the freedom fighters family, the social uh, activist family, also culturally inclined. Since independence, there was a lot of uh, uh, confidence and a lot of enthusiasm and rena renaissance of Indian culture. But this was a decisive threshold that I was going to cross. And my grandfather somehow felt that there was no need to then take it so far. And he told me, no, you will not go for these double rehearsals and all, just learn it. It was said in such a way that I felt hugely insulted and I barricaded myself in my room, the government Raj Bhavan. For two days, I didn't eat, I didn't call, nothing. And he knocked and he knocked. And the third day he said, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you something which will decide your future. And I opened the door. I have spoken about a few things like these in my books, my interviews, in my talks, because there are those things which are like lines on the stone. They cannot be erased ever. My grandfather explained to me a little bit of the history 
social political history of India's slavery. Slavery to foreign ideas, ideals, and values which were not ours. And therefore, especially dance, because it's a physical art. The body is the instrument and how the woman's body can be so beautiful, so attractive, so mesmerizing can mislead the viewers, all that. So, I mean, I, 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 I think I just sort of said, yes, 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 yes. So, so then come to the point, like, you know, he said, give me two promises. One, I promised him. And as he held my hand, he said, you will never compromise your self-respect in Gujarati. I said, yes. Okay, never. Second, you will never make dance your business. Business. Dhanda nahi karegi. Dhando nahi karwano. Nrityano. You will not sell your dance. You will not use it commercially. Now, two promises taken. My Arangetram happened in a grand way. The who's who of the state of Mysore and all that were there. Devi Karani, the grand actress of the silver screen. India's pride in those years. The Bollywood, Bollywood, Bollywood was not there. And Devika Rani with her Russian painter husband, Rorik, was there, as was the Maharaja of Mysore, the great musician, composer, as was the entire cabinet. And she wrote a beautiful letter saying, you are a born dancer. Make this your yoga. So what the two eminent you uh, 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 vice chancellors have spoken here. That was endorsed by Devi Karani decades ago, 1961. Make this your yoga. Meaning don't waste it. Don't go after fame, name, glamour, glitz like today. At that time, I didn't understand. But again, that stuck in my head. I, I cut to 1962. <clears throat> When in Bombay during my junior BA, because the college was still four years, we did not have 10 plus two as today. 11th was matriculation in Gujarati medium school in Bombay. Then I joined Elphinstone College and I took German literature honors, Gujarati subsidiary. 1962 was my first public performance in Bombay. Can you imagine? My friends were all selling tickets. Tara by Hall, Marine Drive. And uh, then the, I think one of the board members or vice chairman of the State Bank of India, Chandavarkar. His wife, Suman Chandavarkar, wrote to me next day saying, we often hear that people lose themselves in their art. Yesterday, watching you dance, I thought you had found yourself in your art. See how, how things develop and how these things stick in your head because they have meant something. Just like my guru, uh, Krishna Rao sir, and this is my famous, famous, again, uh, a saying, I could not, I could not bring the naika bhavas on my face, you know, love and longing and yearning at the age of 17. Unlike today, unlike today, they are all very wise. I was not. We did not know the ways of love and we did not have WhatsApp and we didn't have Netflix. So he got so tired. And one day he said, look outside the window. What's happening? I said, some monkeys are dancing. You know, the fellow had come with the damaru, dug, 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 dug. And a pair of monkeys were with the gungrus at the ankles were dancing. You know, Bangalore, those years. He said, 
pointing the tatakari at the monkeys and me said, show me the difference between monkeys and you. Can you imagine what a slap it was on my face? That slap is still here. That slap is still here. What is the difference? Who am I? If monkeys can dance, if people can dance, do somersaults, do acrobatics in the name of dance, what is dance? Who am I? What am I doing? Why? So all these things formulated my steps, I would say, on this journey, one by one by one. And then I would like to cut to uh, the simple definition, not definition, but the simple um, question, arts, what are arts? Kala. Vidya. These are Vidyas. They are not in North India somehow. In South, you were very lucky. The invaders came to you much later and did not make a big mark, did not leave a big mark on you. North was ravaged century after century. And then what came was entertainment, just pure and simple entertainment, where they threw money, where the female form or even an attractive male form was to be devoured by the eyes and to be used, enjoyed as you wished. So it became Nach Gana. It did not remain Nritya Sangeeta it became Nachkana. And therefore, as I said, the words have meanings, the names have vibrations. Nritya Sangeet Arvidya Kala Nachgana. What is it? It is somewhere cheap entertainment in which anyone can indulge and the outcome can be whatever. So, I thought, how does Vidya, the knowledge, with Vidya, to know? Again, what do you want to know? Who am I? Same question. So, all the Vidyas point to that one basic question, which has, which have been answered in so many Upanishads, in so many of our Shastras. And uh, the questions of Nachiketa, the questions of uh, 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 Satyakam, the questions of so many, Lopa, Mudra, Gargi, Yagya, Valky, I mean, you name them. They still remain valid of value to each individual. You know why? My answer, my question and answer is for me. I can only share. But it may not apply to you. You have to ask yourself. You have to go through that tapasya yourself. And you have to undertake that yatra, that journey yourself. And so the tangible and the intangible. The tangibility of Vidya is what? In the books, in the Google today, <laughs> Wikipedia, <and> your computer. <laughs> I laugh so much because I find this so funny and so ridiculous. The Google has become the great Acharya. The Google has become the ultimate. <laughs> and whether right or wrong, it is the Sanatana Satya. My God, where have we arrived? Anyway, so the tangibility is the first thing that we have. The books are there. The instruments are there. The sculpture is made. The sculpture is there. Painting is made. The painting is there. All these things are tangible. We can see, we can hold. Then what is intangible? 
Now, intangible is like, the body is tangible, my breath is intangible. And because of this breath, I am alive. Because of this breath, my body is alive, it is working. I can speak, I can hear, I can see, I can taste, I can touch, I can think. So this is simply the tangible and the intangible. Now I come to my own form, dance. The Shastriya, especially as a Shastriya, that which per pertains to Shastra, that which has a form and niti niyam vidha, it has rules, it is a compendium, and it has a discipline. The discipline which sets you free at the end of it. Just like, why, why are you all studying? How did you become a professor? Because you adhere to a certain rule of learning. You adhere to that entire process. And that set you free to think, to go ahead, to select your path. And this is where I say that the classical, it's a wrong, uh, a wrong word actually to use, Shastriya, Vidhas, styles of dance of India are so special. They begin with the tangible, as I said, because the body is there. Now, how do you train the body? Like you train your mind to study for PhD, for MA, for MPhil or whatever. How do you, this is my book. This is my book. This is my process. This is my system. This is my compendium. This is the Bharatanatya Shastra made tangible from top to toe. Each anga, upanga, pratyanga, each major limb and minor limb has to be trained in so many ways. In how many ways the eyebrows will move how many ways the eyes will go down, up, look here, look there, look across. How many ways the mouth should move and how many ways the neck can move and how many ways you can use your fingers, your shoulders. The Angika Abhinaya, what you can depict through this body alone, your posture, the way you sit, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you stand. It says something about you. It is your character. And then what do you do with this body? I, I'm sorry, I have to say this, that even in Rajya Sabha, in my central hall, my very dear friends, parliamentarians, I have a wonderful group of friends from different parties, political parties. One dear friend, I can name him here, right here, Tiruchi Siva from DMK. <laughs> He's a, <laughs> from DMK um, uh, and, and a wonderful connoisseur of arts. He writes poetry, he sings. Like that, I have people from Congress and from NCP and all. And we are a wonderful. And I often, they say, my God, Sonalji, you have an incisive drishti. How people walk in, they stand, they talk, and I say, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. and I make comments, and they say, yeah, how do you know? Because I'm a trained dancer. I know exactly. I look at the eyes, I know what you're thinking. Because with my eyes, I am telling the audience of thousands, of hundreds, at the same time, I am binding them with my one drishti. The drishti that says something. It says about love, it says about anger, about pathos, about compassion, about bhakti, I don't know. And yet it reaches each one, it conveys. And that is the intangibility of the tangible. My eyes are tangible. What they convey is intangible. You cannot hold it, but you can feel it. And you can feel it deep down within you. It leaves a mark somewhere. As you said, both 
learned professors that it carries you into unknown landscapes of imagination. It takes you away from yourself and yet it brings you closer to yourself somewhere. It connects you to so many unknown points of life you never thought of, you never imagined. It unleashes rasa pravaha in you, rivers and streams of emotions that you never knew existed in you. What is that sound? Yes. Okay. So, the tangible and the intangible, in short, are like the body and the life breath. And without the intangible, the tangible is just khali, empty frame. And what our dance does is that it carries the entire audience on their journey, on their yatra from the tangible to the intangible of self-discovery. So many people, even today, it's amazing. Ma'am, some minister, <coughs> ma'am, I was in school. You had come and you had given a lecture demonstration and you had danced. And ma'am, I remember, they tried to tell me what they remembered. Today's great bureaucrats and intellectuals from St. Stephen's College in Delhi. Ma'am, we saw you, you had come. I said, yeah, Professor, Principal Rajpal, it was the uh, golden jubilee or something of 125 years of St. Stephen's College. And I was the uh, main dancer, the main, I, I gave a speech and all. Said, we remember, I said, yeah, you remember. What do you remember, tell me. And I cross-examined these great minds. In the sense to say that in India, in the great Bharata Varsha, the arts and the artists have been placed on the same pedestal as the great Vidwans, the great scientists, the great social leaders, and the great reformers. Reforms addressing issues through arts also has been one of our very, very strong points. For example, when I present my Natya Katha, it is my special form that I developed in the past 11 years, emanating from my dance and my, the way I speak before dances, Natya Katha. And I hope to do that for you. Even this uh, virtual Natya Katha has started. <laughs> Atma Nirbharta. <laughs> and when I, when I did my Natya Katha, the real Natya Katha on Draupadi, 300 parliamentarians, I'm talking of about 25 years ago, when Shivraj Patil was speaker of Lok Sabha. He had seen my performance, the premier, but I tell Bihari Vajpayee, the leaders, opposition leader, Nasim Rao, all were there. And he said, I want you to perform this for our members of parliament. And I did. Will you believe it? That they were slipping under the seats and looking down when the Draupadi throws questions at the Kuru Sabha. And at that point, the audience is the Kauravas, the court of the Kurus. What is Niti? What is Dharma? What is Satya? Nobody is able to answer. And I say that even today, the same questions remain. But it hit them. And all of them, without exception, the telephone, sent messages, sent letters, said, we never experienced this kind of uh, arrow. So many things happen in our constituencies. We never bothered. Now, my God, we will have to pay attention. She has opened our hearts. So that is what the arts do. Social issues can be addressed of environment, of eco ecological imbalance, if we talk about that. So when I talk about 
the famous story from Srimad Bhagwat, the life of Krishna. And this is my favorite uh, uh, example that I give like all Bharatanatyam dancers, Kuchipudi dancers, Kathakali, Mohiniyattam, all dancers dance this. And there are several Padams and Kritis, Adi Dhano Ranga, Adbhuta Dindali, Kalingana Fanayali, Purandara Dasa Kriti in Arabi, like that, Shamasha, everybody's written. And I say, when Kaliya, the Cobra King was in the Yamuna, the Yamuna became poisonous, became stinking, and even today, the Yamuna in Delhi looks the same. What happened? Who will remove this poison of pollution? Where is Krishna? And today, neither Supreme Court nor governments, but each one of us is Krishna. We will have to become Krishna. And this is the message that goes down so beautifully to children and to adults. So this is what my dance does. This is what our arts do. They directly address so many issues, problems in society. They open the minds and they bring out the rujuta, the hard surfaces that we create for ourselves, the masks that we wear every day. The arts penetrate these very easily and take you nearer to yourselves. Today, most, you know, as you said, that with the COVID and Corona, people were isolated. They had to face themselves. They didn't know what to do. Most became uneasy, can't go out, can't go to malls, can't go to movies, can't go just to do gapshap. What shall we do? And slowly, slowly, they came closer to themselves. I'm sure many have experienced that. And the examples that families began to sit together and look at each other instead of looking at their mobiles. We have come to that situation. So this entire journey of self-discovery sometimes is also helped by nature, which gives you a jatka, <laughs> which says, be careful, don't run here and there, don't ruin my things, don't pollute your mind and the environment, don't try to harm me, I am the supreme Shakti, the nature. And all these great presidents of world countries, all these people who are making bombs and newer technologies to fight, building dams so that they can release water to harm other countries. I'm not naming the countries, you know that. What will they do? Their own countries are now flooded. Can they push a button and say, stop? They cannot. And this is also the self-realization. I hope they go through this journey that they are only that much a particle of dust like all of us in this journey of time, in this journey. And that is the self-discovery. The minute you understand that you are and you're, yet you are not, you are by the grace of that something. You are nothing without that grace. Even as I speak, I may drop down. And you will hear tomorrow, Sonal Mansing, while she was addressing Tamil Nadu Central University, is no more. Like Professor APG Abdul Kalam, it happened to him. He was giving a talk and he had said, I, I, I hope to die as I'm working. And he was talking in Shimla and he just went. And I hope to die dancing, singing, jumping. So the self-discovery, I will come to uh, the last five minutes, may I speak? In 2006, I had the great opportunity to go on the pilgrimage to Manasarovar and Kailas. And from Manasarovar, you, the, the cars take you upwards to Kailas. Ashtapath, 
which is at the height of about 17,000 something, nearly 18,000. <clears> That's a plateau closest to the south face of Kailas. And that Ashtapat is a sacred land. Even in the middle of that entire sacredness, it's a sacred plateau where Nanak Dev, Lakshmana, Mahavira, Buddha, they all have done tapasya. And that is where the Tibetans create a mandapa with the torans uh, for that particular day, Sagadava festival. And they raise the axis mundi of about 100 feet or more. And the, 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 they, they have tied the bandhanvar, toranas, and that that, that that land below that is sacred. Nobody can step on that. I was fortunate to be asked to dance. Can you imagine facing Kailas, the Ardhanarishwara south face, it looked to me, appeared to me, and I danced for half an hour. And I was not dancing. It was not me dancing. It was something that was dancing from within me. I had done 2,000 pranayams, bhastrika, kapalabhati, you name it. And my first prayer was to Devi. How dare I lift my foot in front of Nataraj? Please bless me. And I danced. There were times, as I say, I'm getting tears. I didn't see anything. I just saw them. I didn't even see them at, at moments. I was there, I was not there. And people say that they saw sparks flying. Sometimes they did not see me. What happened? And that was also moments of self-discovery, not only for me, but for all those who were there. Like that, so many things have happened where dancing, preparing for Laleshwari, the saint poetess of Kashmir, like your Andal, like your Mahadevi Akka, and the same like Vachanas, the Lal Lalbak are famous, the Shaivite, the Kashmiri Shaivism. And uh, I was preparing the choreography, I was Laleshwari, and in my rehearsals, Kacche dhage se khichu mein apni naya. Kacha dhaga. It was not the thread that is twisted and is perfect. It is the kacha, unmade sutra, unmade thread, which can break at any time. With that, I'm pulling my naya, my Noka, my now, my little boat. I don't know who's pulling it. At the same time, I'm the boat, I'm that thread, and I'm the passenger. Oh, Shiva. And I believe that I was just doing whatever, whatever, whatever. There was total silence. 40 people there, musicians, dancers, technicians. And I collapsed, I believe, in tears. And they said, I, we don't know what happened. So the self-discovery is in many, many ways. I will conclude by saying, to me, it is like the seven saptaswaras, the ascending notes of our musical scale, whether in Carnatic music, Hindustani music, it's the same. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni. And I wrote, sa is the body. The thai swara. Permanent. It is there for you. Re, rishabha, is the desire that arises within you. Gandharva. Ga is the choice. The choice you make. Madhyama is the memory. Panchama, devotion, is again the second thai note. 
is a permanent node. Sharja and Panchama. And Dhaivata is the hard work, tapasya. And Nishada, the last note, is the patience, dhairyam. These are my <laughs> seven notes of self journey, swa yatra. And uh, I would say, like the Kathopanishad says, Swami Vivekananda has quoted it so often, Uttishthata Jagrata Prapya Varani Bodhata. Stand up, get up, awaken, arise, and go out there to get what is the best that is meant for you. Get it, but first, Wake up, get up, stand up, <laughs> make your spine straight, chin up, look at the sun. And then, Uttishtha Jagrata Prapya Vara Nibodha. Vara is the best and get the best for yourself. And that will be the fruit of self-discovery, the journey. Again, Gita tells us, don't worry about the fruit. The fruit will be there, whether you want it or not. So, Sukha Dukha Same Kritva, Labha Labho Jaya Jayo. Second Adhyay. We arrive at that point in the journey of self-discovery where happiness, sorrow are the same. Labha and Alabha. Your benefit or you don't get benefit is the same. Jaya Jayo, whether you are victorious or not, is the same. I wish you all that you arrive at that point in your life. And I pray that we all become the sthai notes for our great Bharata Varsha. That we are always in the ascendance, in the ascending notes. And we create the dance of life. We create the music by which the entire world can hear the sweet notes of Madhurya, Madhurima. Thank you so much. May Bhagwati bless us, Saraswati bless us all. Thank you so much. I mean, I really have uh, no words to describe the kind of feeling that I think all of us are going through. Uh, Ma'am, uh, a few questions, if you don't mind. So Please. one question from one of my colleagues here is, as per your perspective, how is art different from physical exercises in terms of representing <laughs> your body? And I would say even soul. I mean, I, that's... Uh, <clears throat> did, he, did he or she ask this question at the beginning or after so listening? Now. Now. Then now. What has that person understood? I would like to question that. Hmm? It's, I said, physical exercise, acrobatic sports, break dance, contemporary dance, all that uses the body, yes. I spoke about the Abhinaya, the Nakashika, using the eyes, eyebrows, to create a rasa, right. to address issues of life. What do you do? I, I have a request. Can you elaborate on two things for the benefit, one for the students and one for you know, my colleagues? The first one is uh, the concept of tapasya, because I think as anybody who's trained in say dance or classical arts, we go through this rigorous training, which actually helps us through our lives, which possibly is missing in the modern education system. I mean, being in the system, I would dare to say that. Can you please emphasize on the need for that tapa that we go through as an artist for that self-discovery? <laughs> Tapasya is all in this now. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, by the way, you must have seen that I laugh a lot because I don't take myself so seriously all the time. And that is also a way to 
wash yourself of that small ego every day otherwise it it collects on you and you become very heavy as i've seen lot of educationists becoming very heavy and that means nothing to me it should sit lightly on you it should stream out from you anyway so coming to this what you asked tapasya is not only sitting in meditation yogah karmasu kaushalam yogah karmasu kaushalam that is also from the gita if we consider tapasya yoga attaining vidya all as a process of tapasya going through fire going through hardships going through obstacles it's a continuing obstacle race the life is and one hurdle another hurdle third hurdle the minute you think you've achieved something there's a turn and you see something else so tapasya as i said if google is considered acharya if online virtual classes or virtual examinations are happening where your laptop is open there your books are open there next to you how what doesn't does it mean anything it does not so the whole problem today is of course even pre corona i would say pre covid 19 the entire slant has been towards towards the uh, the yantrikaran the machinization of activities whether education you learn from youtube people take recipes people learn dance people online classes okay yeah they say oh if people cannot go if people cannot reach how did they reach earlier when there were no aeroplanes and no railways and no nothing how did they do it so i'm not saying we go back to that it's not possible how can we create how can we create hardships for ourselves today in delhi in my great sarkari governmental bungalow number 11 janpath surrounded by huge gardens and trees and lawns and peacocks and monkeys i still switch off lights fans air condition i do not run air conditions as far as possible during the day and at night no okay i sweat i need to sweat i need to feel my body i need to have that feeling of ah i need to go back to my dancing days to my rehearsals that is what has reached me to this point now so what i say is everyone despite having so much convenient so many convenient uh, uh methods to yourselves now create hardships that is tapasya you must train your mind not to become used to all the conveniences and to feel unhappy uncomfortable without them so every day you must have light and shade in your life that is the tapasya for today thank you thank you so much and uh, m- one last question uh, which would be uh, from the natya shastra and as we understand it natya was meant to educate and not just entertain it's always said that it is to transmit the gnana of the vedas and it's, it's always treated as an educational tool which i think most people today do not understand can you just elaborate on that so that people get that seriously it's a request <laughs> ayyo <laughs> again you know when every dancer new old young whatever mature eminent not known can dance in the corridor of her house in the kitchen or the living room of, or or terrace and put it on the youtube put it on the facebook and say i'm the superlative dancer 
there is nobody to challenge. What happens? I, I find it a little difficult to address this question today when two and a half minutes of television time in reality shows can give you name and fame, maybe it for a short time, but that is what has become now the, 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 water, the benchmark. Even for five minutes, for five days, you are famous. Oh, I saw you on television. Oh, I saw you on YouTube. Oh, I, ah, you are very happy. Thumbs up, you are happy. Thumbs down, you are depressed. This is what has happened, madam. And whoever has asked the question, dance and music, yes. Education is a heavy word, I would say, for self-instruction for guidance, sanmarga, satbuddhi, satbuddhi. It guides you and it, as I say, brings you closer to yourself. As you come closer to yourself, your vibrations spread wider and wider. You do not have, you know, today, I mean, I'm doing all this virtual thing. I don't know. Uh, what you call computer even today. I am my young friend sitting here who does all this for me, very kind of him. I never knew how to go on Facebook, on YouTube, on nothing, nothing, nothing. I was only taught by my secretary four years ago, email, receive the call, drop the call, and messages, and WhatsApp. That's it. What I say... Entertainment is through, yeah, I'll just quickly say, through entertainment, you bring them closer to instruction, not the other way. You start instructing, it's heavy, people don't like it. You start with entertainment, but have some, have some core to it, have some essence, which unfolds with entertainment. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the whole talk. I would request our uh, Vice Chancellor, I think, to, uh, Professor Kumaravil to say the closing words. Thank you so much, ma'am. Professor Kumaravil, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Uh, yes, you can please speak. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Madhurima. I would like to record my appreciation and sincere thanks to Dr. Sonal Mansing on behalf of all the audience who have been amply benefited by her inspiring presentation. Madam has made a very effective beginning on the need for self-discovery in the emerging digital context of social media, which I have also outlined in my welcome address. Madam, you have made interesting observations about the connotations of the names by eliciting the implications of your own name, Sonal. In this context, I would like to add that the very word culture has an etymological derivation from the Latin word cultura, which means cultivation and refinement of behavior. Our country, India is known for worldwide rich cultural heritage. The new education policy, National Policy and Education 2020, has also emphasized the twofold objectives of education, preservation of culture and transmission of culture. I am very happy to note that Madam Dr. Sonal Mansingh's distinguished lecture is a very relevant topic and coverage with a significant contribution to meet the new challenges facing the present global COVID-19 crisis by sensitizing all of us to the new untouched but vital field of self-discovery. A vast diversified <laughs> country like India, known for its cultural plurality, tolerance, Catholicity, communal harmony, 
has the world's largest collections of songs, music, dance, performing arts, known as cultural heritage of India. Before concluding my address, I would like to quote a relevant and wonderful message of Swami Vegananda on self-discovery. It was Swami Vegananda who popularized this self-discovery concept. He very beautifully told, every soul is potentially divine. Every human being, every one of us is potentially divine. It is the responsibility and duty of education as to manifest the divinity already existing in every man and woman, latent and unidentified through art and culture. And if we go back to the Greek <coughs> wisdom, through the philosophies of Socrates, Plato, and even the American poet Emerson, they have been the champions of self-discovery. Madam, I once again thank you. And you have made a very interesting observation that Google is a great Acharya. But Madam... Google... No, no, I was negative. It was yeah, negative yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what I would like to supplement. <laughs> Google can complement and supplement an Acharya like you, but it can never replace a great teacher. <laughs> so, well, your speech had profound philosophical, cultural, spiritual, and psychological implications. I am sure all the listeners, all the audience have been captivated and benefited by your authentic and emphatic presentation. We hope earnestly that this self-discovery concept will evoke a great awareness and sensitization as a self-therapy mechanism in this period of stress and strain. I, on behalf of the Central University of Tamil Nadu and on my own behalf, I thank you, Madam, for sparing your very precious time. And I thank our most respected former Vice Chancellor, Professor A.P. Dash, who has been a great source of inspiration and encouragement in all our activities. I thank Professor Madhurima for all the meticulous arrangements she has made for the success of this program. I also thank all the audiences for your cooperation. Thank you very much. And before I say a final thanks, my thanks to Professor Priyambada Hejmadi for letting this happen. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Sonalji. It's been a very inspiring. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.